Oh hi! This is a 2D. It has only height and width, no depth. And this is a 3D. You can rotate and you can zoom in and out. Now what if I want to take my 3D with me on the road like I can do with my 2D? That's what we have gravity sketch for. So let's learn it. I like to start every sketch or drawing by pressing the home or home orientation button just so I have the setup and then I make sure to turn on mirror because sooner or later I will use mirror so I want to see that the mirror plane is exactly in the middle or if I want to sketch on the mirror plane so this is always good to do. And then since here I wanted a ball for the body I just take the revolve tool and I draw well, a relatively uh, round circle, well, circle-ish, and I give it a color. Uh, now it looks a little bit overlappy because I forgot to turn off the mirroring and that you can also easily do in the advanced stroke editing option. Since drawing the circle was not perfect, I make sure to adjust my control points up until I get a relatively nice and smooth uh, sw sphere in this case. Uh, you don't have to be perfectionist. This uh, software is not about being perfectionist. It's about really throwing your ideas out there. Once I'm done with that, I turn the whole um, drawing surface to the side just because I know that I want to use the revolve tool again and I want to have the axis below my uh, uh, sphere. So something that here I had to adjust since I wanted this axis to be nice and angular because this is more of the robotic part I needed the, to adjust it to low poly mode and I didn't have the low poly mode turned on when I chose this tool but that is not a problem at all because we can always go into advanced stroke editing mode or whatever that is little thing on the side and there you can choose to switch between low poly and non low poly mode. Same goes for for mirroring so if something is mirrored and you don't want it mirrored you can turn it on from there if you forgot to turn on mirroring in the beginning you can always turn it on because the mirroring plane is always in the same place uh, and as you can see it's pretty much the same thing you uh, I use revolve for all these shapes and then I adjust the shapes by moving the control points until I get to the shape that I uh, really enjoy and yeah as, as I said because I like a little bit of a, 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 the, the hard surface feel here I make sure to take them and just make it something that I like. In the end I turn the plane back to its proper size and I push the axis up into the body. Once the axis is where I need it to be I turn the camera 90 degrees and I make sure to uh, switch or reset the drawing plane because I usually I switch between the draw plane camera and the free camera so it happens that I forget where my drawing plane is every now and then so make sure to check in which mode you are and to reset the plane if you are not in a free camera mode. Uh, anyways then I just take the stroke tool and from there on I just draw this little handle that is supposed to be in front of my robot's face I would say. Uh, and uh, yeah I just give it a yellowish color because I want it to, to be sort of like safety bars and I keep on adjusting the control points adding new ones until I get where I need to be. Uh, if I haven't mentioned you can easily add a new control point just by pressing down a little bit harder on the dotted line in between your uh, control points. Uh, and I do this until I get sort of the, the bar that I, I like it and the, we're gonna have the eye in between those outcrops on the bar. And I also make, push, make sure to push the bar a little bit closer back, not intersecting the ball but until it is definitely closer uh, to the body. Next step is taking the planar volume tool and creating those little outcrops from the body because that bar needs to be connected somehow <laughs> to our main uh, sphere. Uh, same as before I just adjust those uh, control points as I needed and the good thing with the planar volume tool is that you can also extrude it. It extrudes uh, symmetrically on both sides. I just pull them apart again pressing down the square or as I like to call it shift button and adjusting it so that the bar sort of goes into it. Then I just copy it by holding down the square and the circle button at the same time so it's just like an alt pull in, in Windows and I reposition it below the sphere 
at the other point where the bar will go into that little object. The next point is repositioning the camera again and using the revolve tool to create sort of the, the eyes. And here I also switch from uh, draw camera mode to free camera mode just because adjusting to see where my plane is is a little bit easier by that little bar from the side. It's not easier, but I like how the camera switches and I can see exactly where I'm horizontal with my drawing plane. So I see where my drawing plane intersects, whatever I'm drawing. And that way I can create this um, eye shape a little bit easier with the revolve tool. But it's really up to you and I do suggest just switch between these two modes, whatever fits your purposes and your needs better. Uh, next, I go to the inking tool just because I want to have some of those more dynamic lines to create sort of a shoulder pad. Uh, this is the same, I just draw the, the quick outline and I adjust it till I have sort of the shape that I want. And the next part, it's the ribbon tool. And the ribbon tool usually only goes one way nicely. So I just make sure to draw it that way. Then I take away all the unnecessary control points and I make sure to adjust it on the two ends and then in between the end, as I said, with pressing a little bit harder, you can add these control points. And because the ribbon tool uh, has two sides, uh, if you add a control point on one side, it's going to be added on the other side automatically. The ribbon tool also comes with low poly and non low poly options. So in this case, I went with the non low poly. I wanted to have it nice and rounded, but I still wanted to have sort of an edge, a nice rounded edge. And as I said before, it's if you push through three control points nicely together, you can get these nice and uh, rounded edges. Then I sort of just go back and I do the inside of the eye, which is supposed to be this, uh, just this white disc that I left a, a sort of an opening in the eye circle <laughs> and you can just push it in there and then you will have the cornea. I don't, I don't know what it, uh, what it is called exactly. Uh, moving on. I create a little bit of pre-detailing just because I always love to just have a little bit of detail in there at the beginning. And I just draw two uh, circles or ellipses that I want to be sort of a cutting uh, lines within my body. Uh, I make sure to adjust them. So wh whenever you draw something and you are out of position, it's not a problem because you can just select your lines and you can move them and make sure that they are sort of in the right position. At some point, I also try out, you have different shaders and I wanted to see if sort of a toony shader works better with my axis, but later on you will see that it is not really working after all. And then to finalize the eye, I take the volume tool and I create the little black dot on the eye, which in this case I decided to make it more of a square just because I found it to be funnier like that. And then with the same sort of uh, methodology, I just create uh, an eyelid and I just make sure that the eyelid sort of has the same grade as, as the eye. And once I was done with that, I enlarged the eye a little bit, well, the black dot and pushed it to the side for some comedic effects with it. And as I said before, if something is not aligned, no problem, you can easily select your previous drawings and jump, just push them left or right. And again, I use the square button to keep it a straight motion. For the shoulders, I wanted to bring in a little bit of detail. So I just uh, took the stroke key and drew up quick geometric shape. And I made sure to keep it in low poly mode. And as you can notice, you can change the profile from round to diamond and to square. So in this case, I just made the, the drawing white but, but thin. And from there on, I had a, a good profile and I just uh, copied that in a bag, making it thicker. I use the same technique for the legs where I just draw a stick, I like to call it, and I change the profile. I do not quite understand why, but the, the square button was tilted here, so I, I could not figure that out. But either way, it's not a problem because I can tilt the thing myself just by pressing down the square button and with my finger pulling in the direction I want it to, to rotate it. Uh, and after I was done with that, I just readjusted a little bit, made the size more appropriate for what I wanted and copied it down. So I both have an upper and a lower leg. 
Uh, I do like to reuse a lot of my assets just so I don't have to remodel things. So I just took the axes from the, the hip area and I just copied it down to where something like the knee would be. And from there on, I just repositioned all the control points to make it a little bit more fitting with, with the knee. So not, not having that uh, giant axis there. Well, once I was done with that and everything was, was in the correct position, I uh, readjusted the colors just because I like to have usually my joints are darker than the, the rest of the legs. And I thought, okay, also let's give it a whimsical, nice color. And since we had that yellow for the safety part, I just went with an orange. Then I saw that maybe it would be cooler if I would have some more detail to, to that joint part, that knee joint part. So I just rotated the, the drawing area in a way that the axis for the revolve tool is exactly where my joint would be. And I drew four more, well, I used the revolve tool to draw four more little uh, circles. Again, I'm stealing my own, uh, not technology, but, but my own models. So I just took the whole ball that is a body, brought it down to be much smaller. And you can do that by pressing down on the square button. And then with two fingers, pinching in or pinching out, make your uh, model bigger or smaller, depending on uh, what you need. And once I was done with that, I just adjusted the colors and uh, turned on the mirroring for the ball as well. Next, I positioned the drawing plane just above the front of the eyes so I can sketch in a couple of details. I love to do this later on as well, just because I love the mix of like 3D model shapes together with the sketchy black lights. And I repeated this process to create a sort of a circle around the area where the, well, I call them safety bars, touch the body itself. Next thing, I continue with the detailing and I just want to add some, some of these circle cutting lines to the hip joint, hip axis area as well. And something that here I will do as well, I realize, okay, I actually do not like the tune shading. So I go to the shading button and I just give it a basic or normal, normal shading and change the color back to that, that gray that uh, it was before. And with that, it is time to start working on the arms as well, which again happens with just uh, drawing a line and then adjusting uh, the thickness of this line. I wanted to have the, the, the round tube looking lines. So I stick with the circular profile for the arms and I make sure to erase the extra control point that I don't need in this case. I will have to rotate this arm a little bit so it's in the right position. And this time it's easier to rotate since I can just grab one of the control points and push them left or right. And I'm gonna just move it around a little bit to see what is the best position. Uh, connecting the, the upper arms to the shoulder area, I feel like I would need some ball or some sort of joint there as well. So I just steal again the joint that I just created for the hip area and place it at the shoulder. Do the same thing with pressing down the square button and pinching in and out until, uh, until I end up with a size that I, uh, I sort of like. Once I'm done with the upper arm, I move on to the lower arm. I reposition the drawing plane in front of my robot's head. And again, I draw a line and go ahead and adjust the thickness. I leave the profile to be rounded and I play around. Again, I take away the extra control point. I wanted the robot to have its arms crossed. So I knew that there is no reason to have the mirror on for this one. That's why I also turned it off when I started working on the uh, lower or lower arm, yeah, of the robot. Uh, I wanted to give it a little bit more detail also when it comes to the shape. So I just took the planar volume tool and drew sort of a circular um, element somewhere at the end part of the lower arm. And I made sure to take away enough of the control points to make it nice and rounded. Once I was done with that, I did notice that, okay, the, the lower arm is just way too long. So I just pushed that uh, new detail area a little bit lower down on the arm. And yeah, I thought that is good, but I saw that, okay, something from an elbow area missing and I didn't want to use just another um, 
sphere there again. So instead of copying the sphere and putting it there, I copied those disks that uh, that I well one disk that I uh, created earlier for the hip area. And the copying I said before that you can do by pressing down square and O. At the same time, you can also just press the duplicate stroke button and that will do the same. It will look like it's deselected, but if you move it, you'll see that another uh, shape stays in place and you sort of created a copy of it. After that, I just move it into position. Uh, as I said, pressing down the square and rotating with my finger, I get it into the position that I want and uh, you can duplicate again if, if it's needed. And once that is done, you just do the final adjustments. As you can see, they were a little bit uh, moved out of place. So I make sure that they are sitting correctly. And the hand is basically the same thing that we did with the legs, which is just draw one line or with a stroke tool usually because that's nice and uniform and squeeze it, make it a square shape, make sure that it's wider mm -hmm. than it is long or thick. And that can be sort of the palm area and you well, or I did repeat the same process three times with three fingers. And I left this time around, I made sure to have one extra control point. <laughs> the control points got out of control there for a second, but I adjusted that quickly. And you can give the fingers a nice bend. I just drew one finger and then I kept on copying and adjusting the consecutive fingers, making, it, making them shorter and giving them more of a blend as well. And once I was done with this hand, I selected all the parts of the forearm and the hand, uh, copied it down and rotated it around. And then they, there came the, the part of having to like create this cross armed uh, stance that the robot is in. And yeah, this took a little while because yeah, it is going to be overlapping a little bit either way, just because if you don't overlap the arms a little bit, it won't look like a proper cross, cross arm position. And since I'm just doing this for modeling and fun, and as I said, I like to keep it relatively sketchy and relatively well, I don't want to say janky, but that, that, that's just how I like to use this uh, program. It's not a problem if you have a little bit of uh, overlap. And I left a li little bit in there, as uh, you could see. Uh, and then it's time to also create the feet. Well, one foot because we're, we're uh, mirroring it, of course. And for the foot, I took the, well, I used the planar volume tool, just uh, drawing out a very simple sort of wedge shape uh, where the robot will be standing on and then just extruding uh, from there. I made sure that the drawing plane is exactly in the middle of the legs. So the extrusion is, uh, is going to cover. I only have to extrude the length of the width of the legs, right? <laughs> yeah. And then I just took the joint from the knee and copied it down to where the legs connect with uh, the feet. And from here on, I start with just adding the sketchy details, which is switching between the drawing planes and the free camera plane, whichever works for me most. The, the, the free camera plane, I notice whenever I'm doing these sketching parts, especially on already existing um, geometry, is the easiest because I just position the camera in a way where it's just floating just above where I want to draw. And if it's not just above, you can use the draw plane slider to bring it closer or further away from the surface you want to draw on. And then you really just have fun. It's, it's from that point, it's really like just sketching and uh, ideating, okay, what sort of lines could there be? And I just added some vert, not vertical, horizontal lines on the uh, upper arm and you will see that I add a circle on uh, the lower arm. This circle I could have also done with the um, revolve tool, but I wanted it to be a little bit more sketchy to have a little bit thin and thickness. And that's also when, when I go into this uh, sketchy phase, I use the ink uh, line tool more often rather than the stroke one because the ink has this uh, uh, nice pen pressure sort of uh, variety uh, to it. Uh, and yeah, and then I just continue adding some more cutting lines to the body as well. So I reposition the, you can, you can also see where the, the cutting line is. 
So whenever you're drawing in free camera mode, it sort of intersects everybody with that, with that white line around it. So I know, okay, where that white line is on one side, I can draw and on the other side, I cannot draw. So I just keep on repeating this uh, process. You can also see me for that little air intake or air outlet. Uh, I keep on, uh, basically I think with my, my drawing plane or uh, like a piece of paper that I keep on moving back and forth throughout the geometry to put down the lines that I'm uh, interested in. And then finally to finish up the design, I love giving sort of a thick shark fin to, to my robot and just uh, dangle a couple of antennas out of it. Um, and yeah, it's really really the same as before, just using the, the planar volume tool. Doesn't matter where you put it exactly on the body because I will push it around. I will make it nice and thick by extruding it. I will not use the, or at least I did not use uh, low poly mode just because I wanted, to be, wanted it to be nice and rounded. Uh, so I just used the three control point trick for the corners. And once I was done with that, I just pushed my drawing plane, not quite in the middle, but somewhere at the three quarter uh, into this uh, shark fin, fin, I like to call it. And I just drew a line, which is the antenna. I did sort of a triangle, very sketchy. And then I turned my drawing plane 90 degrees and drew one circle around this antenna and just duplicated that circle a couple of times. So we have this sort of coil. I always find that uh, to be an uh, interesting look. And once I was done with that, I thought, okay, let's add another one of these Ex uh, what is it like exhaust vent or wh whatever you want to call it <laughs> I don't know what you call it but I just like these little grits where, where air can come in or go out or uh, escape from the inside of your machinery whatever that is and it's it's just cute it, as, as I said it gives this really hand sketched feeling to uh, a 3D design that is just I really that this is what I really find so cool about um, uh, gravity sketch yeah and yeah, my, my drawing plane wasn't close enough, no problem. I'll just select these lines and I'll push them a little bit closer to my shark fin. And since I drew those circles that are supposed to indicate, I guess, screw in areas, I would put a couple on the other side as well, just for it to be a little bit more uh, symmetrical. And with that one last thing I, I, I thought of doing, I was looking at the hip area and that was quite barren and empty and I wanted to bring in some detail as well. So I just totally made up some detail. So I positioned obviously the drawing plane just above my uh, hip circles, hip discs there again. And I just started drawing in some random detail, really, really nothing thought out. I could have put a bit more effort into thinking of an interesting design there but yeah I thought like let's let's just have something there and something that I also noticed is I actually enjoy it when the surface and my my sketches above it don't really align so you have a little bit of this interesting oh this is floating in the air yeah yeah it is it is floating in the air uh, sort of uh, feeling to it and to tie the the little design together I did create a circle with a revolve tool and just just to tie everything a little bit together and then pushed it as close as I could uh, onto my uh, hip disc. Uh, yeah, and I just finished it with one more sort of um, oval uh, slot looking um, sketch just above the hip bone, hip, <laughs> hip disc area. Uh, that's also interesting because you can see that you, you just draw a relatively straight uh, rectangle and then once you go into different viewing mode with the control tools you can really just keep on adjusting it until you have exactly what you need, this nice and rounded thing. And with that we are done with our little robot guy and we can take a look at him in all its glory. Well I hope you liked this uh, tutorial of mine. Uh, if you didn't understand something, please leave me a comment. I also have a much more sketchier style within Garrity, so if you're interested in that, I might do one of those in the future as well. But um, yeah, hit that like button, dislike button, as the most important thing is that you leave me a, a comment. And uh, don't forget, if you want to support me, if you like my stuff, there's always a Gumroad link down in the description where you can find more uh, interesting videos that you can buy if you want to. But as always, the most important thing is that you folks have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.